Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Lauren, thank you so much for watching. Today we are going to be just talking about makeup releases. It's been a long time. I haven't done one of these for a while it feels like and if I'm being honest, I haven't really kept up with what the new releases are at all. I've been very absent on Instagram. I'm just like a lurker. With everything going on, I've just kind of succumbed to my base habits of just kind of like existing but not commenting and not posting. Even with that though, when it comes to like my feed, I haven't really been looking at stuff. I just haven't really been on Instagram that much really honestly is what it comes down to so this new beauty launches will be a little bit different I will be like basically reacting to them live in a way because I haven't seen many of the things going on it's kind of weird also because Colourpop has shut down for the pandemic because they're based in California and there's like the whole stay at home thing and all non-essential businesses are closed and Colourpop's lab and like shipping facility whatever they're all closed and it's a weird world not having 10 million Colourpop releases I'm actually really happy that they closed down I think that it was really great of them and I know there's like two sides of the coin when it comes to things shutting down But with everything going on I'm really happy that you know the health and trying to flatten the curve That's what they chose to do anyway That's just like a weird thing, but we're gonna get into the releases I'm probably just gonna go through trend mood and freaking tell you what I think about the new stuff I'm not necessarily in the market to buy things not that I wouldn't buy anything But I'm trying to keep it chill keep it cool <laughs> use the shit I have and enjoy that so anyway, let's just let's just get into the new launches. Okay, so I just got <laughs> <laughs> not to the website and Colourpop's releasing something with Ulta. So I don't know what that means. Maybe they are doing stuff. Maybe everything I just said was a big old fat lie. Uh, not sure. Anyway, <laughs> this is the Celestial Collection and it is an Ulta exclusive. There are two different palettes. It looks like some lip glosses and also some blushes. Okay, I love the idea of a celestial collection. Like, I'm still into that trend. I don't think that trend and like, you know, horoscope crap and crystals and all that shit, I don't think it's going to go away anytime soon. And I'm here for like the imagery of that and the vibe of that and like all that crap. So I don't mind a collection coming out that's called the celestial collection. These palettes don't necessarily get me. And I think bigger than anything, it's the fact that they look very similar to a couple other nine pan palettes that they came out with more recently. There was like a more cool toned mob one and then there was more of like a warm neutral and this collection looks very similar to that I'm not saying it's exactly but my god it's pretty dang close I think that the blushes are the most interesting part of this and I mean by interesting I just am the most interested in them they're very basic colors eh, it's just okay to me it's just okay nothing that would tempt me in absolutely any way moving on it's a new pen from milk makeup and this is the push triple brow pen this is really interesting looking I've always been intrigued by by these types of product. I bought the Glossier one that's just like the pen. It doesn't have like a triple pen effect. It's just like a single pen. And I bought it in blonde, which was too light. <laughs> and so it was really hard to like draw that over my already existing hairs that are light anyway. It didn't quite work out. So if I were to get this, I know I would want something dark enough to actually show up. As someone who needs to fill in her brows to get any color, it can be easy for my brows to look almost like powdery or kind of blocky and, and you don't see the hairs individually because I'm trying to like fill in everything. So this can be great for that, but I also think it can be great for at the beginning if you have a sparseness of hair or at the tail or wherever you might have some sparseness with hair, it can be a great tool to actually give those brow hair looks instead of it looking again kind of powdery and just flat on the skin. With my eyebrows, this eyebrow comes in further of actual hair and this one doesn't for whatever reason. So I think that it would be a really nice tool here to mimic hair with without making it look fully filled in. Anyway, totally is on brand for milk. Um, I don't think I would need it. I think it's it's $22, which is like really expensive to me. So I probably wouldn't buy it, but I think it could be useful depending on the type of brow look you want and are into. All right, next, let's talk about a palette. Finally, oh, we talked about the ColourPop palettes, but this is like just a singular, I feel like solid release of a palette. This is the 420 palette from Melt Cosmetics. They're staying on trend with their weed theme. <laughs> it says striking array of potent yellows, amber neutral, and a hint of green inspired by the vivid hues and tones found in Shatter, the most concentrated and powerful version of cannabis. I literally know nothing about weed. <laughs> I mean, they are taking their inspiration. It seems like they got a full-on story going on and I do enjoy that, you know me. Even if I personally don't know too much about it, I can buy into a theme and I definitely feel like they are experts and know what they're doing here um, when it comes to a color story inspired by cannabis, so here we go. I've said it before and I will say it again. I am always inspired by Melt and I really do like 
like the brand, but the shadows don't always work for me. As much as I think this color story is pretty, I don't see myself creating a ton of looks and I don't see myself actually getting the use out of the colors. There's something about the combination of these colors that doesn't quite inspire me to create eye looks. I think it's beautiful looking at the palette. I think it fits with their theme that they're going for. So all of that makes sense. It's just for me and personal use. I know I wouldn't get enough use out of it and I know it wouldn't inspire me out of like all the palettes I have. So I don't think it would be a good buy. I'm just like scrolling right now. There's like a lot of crap I literally don't care about. <laughs> From Hourglass, there's a new eye primer. <laughs> I guess that's good. Not really an exciting release, but I do think like every brand should have an eye primer. So it would make sense for them to have one. House Labs came out with some new lip products, which to me is not very exciting. There's like a blue one, a really dark color, some natural ones, some lip liners. Not necessarily a bad launch. And as her brand expands, it would make sense for her to like continue to come out with new products and new shades. I'm just literally not interested even in the slightest. Something that I think is cute as hell. I think this is so cute. These are from Makeup Revolution. They're the Tasty 3D like fruit highlighters. There's a strawberry, a peach, and an apple. And I think all of them are so beautiful. I would love to get that peach one. The Tasty Peach is like exactly what I'm into right now. That would be a tempting buy for me because I just like love highlighter too much. Like I, I don't want to see that and I don't want to believe that, but you know. <laughs> how many eyeliners can a girl have? But that one's really, really pretty to me and I think it's cute. Everything about it kind of works and it's inexpensive compared to like high-end stuff at Sephora. So that one's tempting. I think those are really cute. If you've tried those, let me know how the formula is. I feel like I've heard around that Makeup Revolution, like their baked highlighters like that are really good. Next, some stuff from Nabla. This stuff is so cute. These are, I think it's like a spring collection. I saw Angelica's video, I need to watch it, on these palettes, but these are the Nabla Cutie palettes. They're coming out with three new ones. They have this really beautiful, mostly cool toned one that I want, hi, I want it. There's like a really beautiful matte. These shimmers are so pretty. I believe it's the platinum one that I'm talking about. It says six elegant, cool toned shades and finishes fluid metal, metal foil, super matte and super sparkle. Yes, like I love that, <laughs> I love that. These retail for $24 each and I do think that those color stories are pretty. I think people can get a lot of use out of them. There's some fun colors and there's something about being constricted almost in your choice of eyeshadows that can inspire creativity. Whereas sometimes when there's too many shadows, it can be overwhelming. So you know me, I love the little mini palettes like this. I think that the color stories are interesting while still being wearable. Like I think they're getting the best of both worlds. The one that I would get is the, platinum that one's pretty even the lipsticks that came out with them though are pretty as well I just don't really do lipstick type stuff but that cool tone palette oof, I like it I might get that we'll see what I actually do but I do think it's pretty this highlighter what is okay oh, Del? oh it's oh my god I thought this was a highlighter every time I've ever seen this like randomly <laughs> I thought it was a highlighter pressed with that, but it's not. It's a fragrance from KKW and it's with Kris Jenner. I mean, it comes at a perfect time for like Mother's Day and stuff, um, but when it comes to perfumes, I'm trying to be really picky. I wouldn't, I would not pick this up. Unless I smelled it and it was like the best thing I've ever smelled, but probably wouldn't be for me. Wet n Wild has some new highlighters. These are the Fantasy Maker Collection highlighters. There's a bunch of stuff, a ton of stuff actually. Oh my God, there's these really pretty quads, but oh, is that glue? Glitter. I think there might be glitters in the palettes. It kind of looks like that just from the picture I'm seeing. So the quads are out of the question, although they look pretty color wise. When it comes to the highlighters, I think that they look really pretty as well. There's a couple shades on there that look interesting to me. I don't know. Not that I haven't had the best luck because the one Wet n Wild highlighter I have in like Blossom, it's like Blossom Petals or something like that. It's like the like cooler toned, almost pink one. I don't not like that one, but I definitely don't reach for it, gravitate to it uh, over anything else in my collection like I thought I would. And I know that it's inexpensive, but something that I'm I'm working on is it doesn't not the price doesn't matter <laughs> it does I'm not rich but having like seven inexpensive products could add up to the price of like the one thing that really would be for you and like the product you use all the time that you're so excited to use so I try to keep that in mind when it comes to products that if there's something my heart's really gunning for there might be something to that instead of just buying things to settle because they're more inexpensive unless because of everything I want that product and then it happens to be cheaper I don't know I just try to keep that in mind lately and so although looking at these they are pretty and I know that they would be more inexpensive 
when it comes to these or even like the makeup revolution I think I would like the makeup revolution better and I also feel like I would rather wait out buying a couple of different highlighters to save up for one maybe that's more expensive I know I'd like more considering my experience with the wet n wild highlighter I have that's where I'm trying to go with this holy shit that was so roundabout <laughs> okay anyway that's what I gotta say there's some new lip glosses out from Anastasia there's like a mini gloss set for $28 with two new formulas they are really beautiful colors I would be interested to see what the opacity is like because some of these are pretty light it looks like like they look great on the model like you know when you see the model picture and you're like it's perfect for me and then you get it and you're like oh wait I'm not the model <laughs> It looks different on me. That's what I feel like could happen with these. <laughs> so I would want to like actually swatch those if I were to purchase. These e.l.f. Sheer Slick lipsticks, I really like the look of. I like that there's kind of this semi-translucent, not fully opaque tubes. I love the idea of something sheer. It kind of looks glossy and dewy. It's like the summer we all wish we could actually have. <laughs> I think that those look really pretty. Ooh, the swatches look so different than the packaging. Wow. I'm kind of shocked. I think a couple of these I would actually really like. They seem though that they could give you like that popsicle lip look which I think is so pretty but it's definitely not my everyday so that would be something that I would want to consider before actually purchasing. Like okay girl how much are you going to wear the popsicle lip look? Actually are you just buying into the fantasy of that? Because realistically I wear lip balm or something very neutral and kind of like semi matte. I want to finally talk about the Sigma. It's the Core de Rosa palette. I think this is actually really pretty. It is basic in the sense of like this is definitely not a new color story but I do think that it's really pretty for Sigma. I think that people could create very cohesive looks but there is enough color variation to have a range of looks that you can do. I feel like there are some palettes where you can get like a orangey brown red look always <laughs> and this one has like almost a purple so you could go more that way. You could go more orange but you could even like pair some of the cooler colors and go a little bit more more cool like depending I don't know I think there's a lot of versatility is what I'm trying to say I do really like it and I have also had really good experience with Sigma's formula when it comes to eyeshadow so I have a feeling that the quality is actually really good between this palette and the enchanted I think I am drawn to the enchanted one more just because of those really beautiful special like flaky glittery shades but this one I think a lot of people would probably use more in their like everyday life Ooh. Okay, Buxom's Spring and Summer 2020 Collection, Staycation Vibes. <laughs> yeah, isn't that the truth? This is <laughs> the Extrovert palette. I don't know how I feel about <laughs> this palette. I think that it's pretty and I'm actually surprised it's so colorful for being Buxom. I think Buxom does a really great job, obviously with their lip glosses, that's like what they're known for. But when I think of those colors, they're all more neutral and I don't know, I just think of like a really pretty look. like. The Instagram baddie pretty look, not necessarily like super colorful. And so I would expect eyeshadows to kind of match that, but this has a little bit more pizzazz in it than I expect. I guess. <laughs> there are a couple blues, there's a yellow, there's like a peachy pink. I can't say I'm mad at the color variation, but at the same time, you know, when I'm looking at how I would create looks, the types of blues that are in here, like that darker blue, it's pretty, but trying to think of how I would pair it with everything else, I'm not really sure. I'm trying to work out the logistics of this palette for me in my head, and it's kind of hard. So I feel bad to like diss it because I'm happy they did color, but it's also just not the right colors for me, I think. And then and the bronzers I just love bronzer okay <laughs> I just do I want to bronze all the time <laughs> as long as it's like a good bronzer for me I just I love a bronzer that's like one of my favorite 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 parts of doing my makeup so those definitely catch my eye this palette from I think it's Viseart this is the the spritz I think is what it's called I think this is pretty it looks like the Cora de Rose palette like you get one you you have them all type of thing I've never tried Viseart's formula still I know so I am interested in trying the formula like I would love to at some point try their eyeshadows I've heard good I've heard bad things so maybe they're great and worth it for me maybe they're not I don't know I feel like I tend to like cheap eyeshadows for some reason <laughs> except for the Cleona ones like other than that I usually like inexpensive shadows I think looking at shadows like this I've realized 
these orangey corally colors. I look at the color story and I'm like, ah, eh, it's not that interesting, whatever. But putting them on your eyes, I'm always like, oh shit, these look so good. Wow, like, oh my God, one shadow, like really pretty peachy gold looks. One shadow, like even a peach matte shade with a little bit of like extra orange on the outer corner. I really enjoy those on me once I have them on. <laughs> But actually seeing the color story, I'm not tempted to buy, which I guess is a good, like that's a good combination. <laughs> so yeah, not tempted, but I probably would really like a lot of the looks I could create with it. Probably the most tempting thing on here for me are the Kosa's bronzers. I just love bronzer, like I said. I feel like Kosa in general is like definitely, is it Kosa or Kosa's? Do you like say the S? For some reason I feel like it's more silent, but I just think I made that up in my head. I don't know if that's true. <laughs> this is a powder bronzer that has a really nice, beautiful sheen to it, which I love. I do wanna try that one kind of, but I'm not sure when that will happen. I definitely have quite a few bronzers right now. I'm trying to work through some. Again, enjoy my collection, enjoy what I have going on, but this is something that tempts me. Like Kosa as a brand, I'm just kind of tempted by, even though I've tried the liquid eyeshadow and I didn't really love it, so I don't know why I'm still like into it. I love the packaging. I think that the actual product itself and like what it's trying to do is my style. So that's just like on the back burner wish list for $34. It's expensive. That's just, too, that's a lot. I mean, I don't want to say too much, but that is a lot of money to me for a bronzer at the moment. Not really what I'm trying to do. Next is another bronzer. You can tell we're trying to get into summer. This is from La Mer, so, so expensive. I do think that this is a pretty product. Like picture wise, this is pretty. Like, yeah, I like it. But I would never pay the money, like ever. It's too much, I can't even, it doesn't even have a price here, but I just know. I know it's too much, it's La Mer, okay? I'm not gonna buy that, but it does look beautiful. M Cosmetics came out with another brow thing. It's just a brow gel, like a clear brow gel. I just feel like they keep coming out with like brow products. I think they have pencils and I think they have like a fluffy fiberish gel and now they have like a clear gel and not that there isn't a place for it but I just want more from them like I want to see like other areas be filled out but I also do think that this fits in line I think they're trying to be kind of their own version of a milk makeup of a Kosa's of a Glossier kind of thing like that's the type of vibe I get from them so I think this falls in line with that but I am excited for other products I'm excited for those BH Cosmetics has a midnight festival collection They've been doing, I think, festival palettes like every summer, like around festival season, which doesn't really exist anymore. Anyway, and this one is... I mean, it just looks like a box of crayons. Like when I look at this, it looks like a box of crayons to me. I don't know how I feel. I think I could create beautiful looks, but just looking at it, it just looks like a mix of tons of different colors. Some of the tones look very similar. Like the two greens are very similar, at least in the palette picture. There's like two lighter blues that look very similar. There's like three other blues that look very similar. I don't know if it's lighting or a bad picture, but uh, I don't know, man, I don't know. And also are those glitters? Please tell me no. <laughs> Oh yeah, pressed glitter finishes. So that right there tells you like I wouldn't get this because of the glitters. Oh my gosh. Okay, so next there's a new product from Becca. It's a new highlighter. This one has like a, I think a duochrome kind of peachy pink glow. It says here a warm gold meets ultra fine and bright pigments in peach and pink tones that adapt to the undertones of your skin and thus bring out the natural glow. Oh shit, they're saying and thus they and thus they bring out. I love Becca highlighters. I would be tempted to swatch this, but I have not been super into the duochromatic highlighters lately. Not that I would never use a duochrome highlighter. It's just not like what my heart's after at the moment when it comes to them. So this one I actually think I would pass on, but I know that Becca has other highlighters out right now too, which I actually did order um, one of them through Octoly, which I'm really excited for it to get here. These are the Ignite Liquefied Light Highlighters and they can be used on the face or the body. So I'm excited that it's not just a body one. I don't know if the original liquid highlighters that they have are being discontinued or not because I know that people love those so much and these seem so similar. So I'm excited to try the new one. I don't think I've really tried the liquid ones before but it'll be interesting I think these ones are meant to be a little bit more moisturizing yeah it says enriched with vitamin E and sunflower oil for all-day moisture I got the shade passion which is the lightest one and it seemed really pretty like it'd be a really good one for me and like what I'm into at the moment as well so 
I will be keeping you updated once I try that out. But yeah, I'm excited for it, obviously, <laughs> since I ordered it. Something that was really exciting is that the Coco Cabana scent from Sol de Janeiro is now going to be in a body wash. Now, personally, this scent wasn't my favorite, but I also feel like my kind of negativity around that product was more about the lotion consistency itself and also like it felt kind of sticky to me. And so I think that it being in a body wash would be the best potential for me to like it. And I definitely would love to try like a little sample size of it and see if I like it. I've noticed there are a lot of scents that maybe I don't love in other ways, but in shower gels are really nice. So that could be one of those scents for me. And the packaging is so cute. All of it's so cute. I love it. Some stuff from Kaja that's coming out. These are some bronzers and they have like stars. They're so cute. There's a highlighter and a bronzer or glowy stamp liquid highlighter. And that's the moon shaped one. Oh, okay. 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 And then there are liquid bronzers as well. I still haven't tried these little stamp gimmicky products from Kaja, which I know are gimmicky, but also I love it. Like it's a gimmick I'm into. <laughs> I do want to try all of them. <laughs> I would try all of those. Oh my gosh. This is the thing I really want. This is like one of the most tempting things. Hourglass relaunched their freaking 2017 holiday highlighter strobing palette. And I didn't buy it then. I wasn't that interested. I really wasn't into highlighter much in 2017 when like everyone else was. And now I'm so into it and these colors look so pretty and I'm like, maybe I would get that, but it's $64. Are you kidding me? <laughs> so much money but it's so pretty and it's like one of the products I feel like from holiday that so many people loved and still actually used after holiday was over. Not many products do that nowadays where they actually like make it past the holiday hype. You know what I mean? That one I would love to have, <laughs> but that's one of the ones that I just, ah. Uh, I don't know, man. $64? Let me know if you'd buy it for $64. It's just, too, it's too much. I can already, I already know the answer, but like, I want to hear your answer. <laughs> Jeez, I feel like that's like mostly it. Holy cow. Okay, wait, there's some, I don't know. It feels like not that many palettes. Okay, there's a palette from Stila. It's called the Rose Less Traveled Palette. It's eight matte and metallic shadows. Not really into that color story. I think this is the difference between just barely tweaking colors because this looks very similar to me in theory to the gimme glow vintage rose palette with like these kind of reds but also greens like mixing those two colors but this to me is not inspiring and cute and the vintage rose although they're not exact they're not exact but I feel like if you were to describe the types of colors in them you could come up with either palette and one's pretty and one is like not so pretty, <laughs> not so pretty to me. Yeah, that one's not exciting. I think all this NARS stuff, okay, you guys, there are some brands that, it's so funny, I don't know if it's because I'm getting older or what it is, just as my tastes change and like, I mean, not even changes and I'm totally different now. It's just kind of this ever revolving door of taste. And sometimes I like things back when I didn't and now I do and you know, whatever. Anyway, brands like NARS, I think excited me at the beginning. And then I kind of was just like, they're so boring. And now I'm back. I'm like, hi, I like all your stuff. Yes, it's a bit basic, but those are some of the products that you need or that I really enjoy so much in really finished looks when I do go a little bit more crazy with color. So I'm just into the NARS stuff. I don't know. I feel like I slept on their releases for a while and now mm, I'm like, hi, I like it. <laughs> I like it. And I have been like that for a little bit. Pretty stuff. Pretty stuff. I think the last thing I want to talk about is from Natasha Denona and this is the retro mini, the mini retro palette. I got quite a few tags on this on Instagram when it first launched. It's been a little bit. I love that Natasha Denona is releasing more of these mini palettes. I really like the mini glam that I have. I love the idea of these smaller shadows. I think that Natasha Denona's quality is really good. I understand why people love it so much. I go back and forth. Like I like some of the shimmers. Some of the mattes are a little bit harder to work. With. I don't know. For me, it's like a mixed bag, I guess, of feelings on the shadows themselves. But overall, I do think that they're high quality. Anyway, I think that this color story is really beautiful. It's interesting. I definitely see like the retro inspiration. I just don't know practically how much I would use this palette. And I want to see it in person. I think that's with a lot of Natasha Denona's palettes. I want to see them in person. I want to swatch them. That always helps me make a better decision on whether or not I actually use it, what the colors actually look like. Because if you see pictures from like Sephora's website or Beauty Bay's website or when Temptalia takes pictures, sometimes those tones um, look quite different. Not like absolutely different colors, but they change in shade enough that it's like, 
it could have been a palette on Sephora that you really wanted and then you see it on a different site and you're like, oh no, not as interested. But I think just having that in-person swatch time is really nice to be able to really decide if it's for you. But obviously that's not really an option at the moment. Anyway, I'm always excited for Natasha Denona stuff lately. I, I think that it's pretty stuff and there still is the option for color in her, in her palettes and in her releases. It's not all neutrals all of the time. But anyway, guys, I'm gonna end the video here. Thank you guys so much for watching and just, you know, catching up with the new makeup releases with me. Let me know what any of your thoughts are on some of the palettes. If you've picked anything up, let us know how it is. If we're living vicariously through you, let us know what you think, what is worth it, maybe what's not. But uh, other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're having an amazing day and I will see you in the next video. Bye.